welcome to my new filming room. I am going to talk about a few books that I did read and some of the books that I am still currently reading that I have the intention of finishing. So first up I'm going to talk to you about Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. This is written from Twilight from the perspective of Edward Cullen. So basically I enjoyed this so much more because Edward, although he's still bland, he's not as bland as Bella. In fact, I started to like Bella more reading from his perspective. I find that characters that I tend to not like, when they're written about from a different perspective, I start liking them more. Edward has no chill and he is definitely creepy, but I like him more than I like freaking Jacob, so there's that. I don't really know what else to say about this. That's what I read mostly in October, I read that one. A fun read reminded me of my childhood. This next one I pre-ordered, Fangs by Sarah and Anderson. Little story comic thing, story comic thing. Each page is like a different scenario and it's basically a love story between a vampire and a werewolf. It's very short but very cute and fun and I read this in one sitting and I just People need to talk more about this because it's so cute. So those were the two that I read physically during October. Um, some of the audiobooks that I did read was um, Peter Pan. I know I finished that. Peter Pan, fucking, I love Peter Pan, dude. Like that was my childhood growing up and I never read the actual book. I just like watched the movie over and over again. But I finally read the book and really liked it. It made me feel nostalgic. Oh, I remember one now. <laughs> I did read The Shining by Stephen King in audiobook. I was so excited for this because I watched the movies and the movies, the movie, and I really enjoyed it. And I just knew that reading the book would add a different kind of contextual part to it. It would just add more to the story. And boy, was I right. Those fucking hedges gave me the shivers. Riding my bike home from work made me kind of shit my pants because I was like reading it while I was on the way. And I was like, why am I feeling anxious about fucking bushes? <laughs> like why? But man, dude, that fucking book, man. It's like one of my new favorites ever. And I really want to rewatch the movie over and over again. So those were two that I listened to an audiobook. Other than that, like this month so far, I've been just listening on and off to the collection of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, I'm really trying to like potter on and finish that. I really want to get that done so that I can say that it's done and that it's not here for me to continue reading to the, at the end of the year. So another book that I am trying to get the short stories out of the way so that I can say that I finally finished it and I don't have any other books waiting at the end of the year is Legends of Sleepy Hollow and Other Tales. So this one, I have been trying to get all of the short stories out of the way. I am now about, let's see, my bookmark fell out. <laughs> so I've got like a few stories marked here that I need to go back and read. And then I have like this much left, which is a pretty hefty chunk. But I've been slowly, whenever I'm like in the mood to read, I just pick up this so that I um, can get it done and that way I'm not having to pick up a full book that's going to really bog me down. This is more like, if I want to read, I can read this. So another book that I've started at the beginning of October and then just haven't read, and I honestly think I'm just going to put this on hold because I know that I'm going to love this book. I've been anticipating it for so long, but I've just slumped into it. So I think I'm going to put this on hold. This one is In the Drowning Deep. Um... It has been like a huge thing. It's by Myra Grant. And I like really, really want to read it because it's like so much up my alley. But I just, I think that I'm not in the right mind space to like sit down and actually read it. So I'm going to put it on hold and pick it up probably in December, which probably towards the end of December. I know that. So. All right. Now I'm going to get into the juicy shit that I've been really excited to talk about with someone, and that is all of my like movies. I watched Nightmare on Elm Street for the first time. Yep, that one with Johnny Depp in it. Um, <laughs> and boy, that was. I have like mixed feelings. I don't think it was my favorite um, horror movie ever, but I definitely enjoyed it for what it was worth, and I definitely will rewatch it again, like every every fucking Halloween. 
It's gonna be one of those like traditions that I think I wanna start having and watch the rest of them. Another one that I actually bought the box set for Friday the 13th and I actually watched the first one. I have not watched the others. I think there's, okay, there's nine in this and I watched one of them. So I have eight more to watch that I haven't got to yet, but that's like, dude, this one is one of my new favorites. I bought this thinking that it was actually, I know what you did last summer. I really want to watch that. But I bought this thinking that it was that movie and it wasn't, so I was a bit bummed, but I fucking loved this. I think this one is my new favorite slasher so far. I don't actually watch a lot of horror movies. I watch more than I thought I did. I'm starting to really find out what horror movies I like and what horror movies I don't like. So this one is definitely one that I like and I'm going to continue watching the rest of them. I'm really excited for it. Oh, it's so good. So I have like a few here. I don't even know where to start. Probably I'll talk about so whilst I've been reading Sleepy Hollow and stuff like that, I bought the DVD for it. It's one of my favourite movies. Um, it's got Johnny Depp in it. It's got, oh my god, what's her name? I've just mentally blanked about her name. Christina Ricci? That's her name? Pretty sure. I've seen this movie that many times, but for some reason my brain, every time I watch it, I like forget about what the hell it's about. And then I rewatch it again and I'm like, oh, that's why I love this movie again. And this one was one of those situations where I showed my two roommates this movie. And I can't remember if any of them had seen them yet before, but I'm one of these people who like wants to like push all of my favorite movies onto other people and make them watch them. And this was one of those that I knew that at least one of them would like, so I made them watch it. I freaking love the way this makes me feel. It's I don't know how else to explain these. I just want to like talk about how much I love things. I actually watched Casper again. I this is one that I watch not frequently enough. Like I watch it once in a blue moon and I completely forget what it's about and then I rewatch it again. And this movie, okay, I thought when watching this that like growing up, I always thought that Casper was attractive. And like, yeah, he is, but boy, do I have the fattest crush on Christina Ricci growing up, but I wouldn't admit it because I was closeted and didn't want to admit the gayness. But like, y'all thought Casper was hot? No. <laughs> That ain't it, Chief. She's hot. <laughs> I love the atmosphere of the house, the like stained glass windows. They're just a really beautiful, beautiful settings. And like this house. And like the fact that the CGI in this back in that time was so good. Like they were proper interacting with things. Like when Ca uh, freaking Casper's pouring the juice into his hand and the pulp's in his hand. Like that was like something that would have blown my mind growing up when you look back on it and how like in that time it was like holy shit this is such a cool thing i just i love this it's so good um this is like how do i say this they're basically her dad is like a freaking ghost therapist i just try to get them to pass on and the whole point is that Casper wants to become human again and his father was an inventor so he kind of creates like a machine really cool and while watching this movie i was like okay why do i want a theme park of this because there's that once that like big invention that the father makes where like he like you sit in a chair and it basically like, gets him ready in the morning speaking of theme parks i watched big scooby-doo and oh my god that movie is literal childhood literally love it really want to go to queensland so i can go on the scooby-doo ride because it's just one of my favorite things one of my favorite things. I love Scooby-Doo, dude. And it like hits different when you watch it as an adult with like different types of friends. Just, it slaps, it's just so good. And um, I need to watch the second one really soon. Beetlejuice, I watched this Beetlejuice with Stacy, and it's become like an ongoing thing between us now because uh, she actually hadn't seen it before and it was one of my favorites. And then I showed her this and um, she also started listening to the musical as well. And it just, Beetlejuice is such a good thing. I'm in desperate need for a tattoo from Beetlejuice. I'll have to show it off if I do end up getting it, but I'm desperate to get a Beetlejuice tattoo. And honestly, just Tim Burton movies, man. They just slap. I had a huge obsession with Tim Burton um, when I was in high school, and I'm just rekindling that now. <laughs> so yeah, Beetlejuice, good, good. Another staple that I love to watch, and that is The Lost Boys. I have not did not watch this until last year I think was the first time I ever watched it and I hired it out and I ended up watching it like three times in a row 
And fun fact about me is that I don't like rewatching movies a lot, but never like straight away afterwards. Even like a week later is sometimes like too early for me. At the cinemas, I think is different because a lot of time you just go for the experience like three times in a row. <laughs> That's how much I enjoyed it. I literally three times in a row. And then I went out and bought it. Yeah. And I didn't end up showing it to anyone. I don't think any of my roommates wanted to watch it. So I just kind of watched it on my own. I don't know. It's just, you can't force someone to watch something they're not interested in, you know? But that one's about vampires. It's about, it's set in the 80s. And it's just like vampire dudes, man. On like a beach vacation. They have like a freaking theme park. Just like there and it's just so cool. I love vampires if you haven't picked up. Um, I cannot believe I put off watching The Haunting of Hill House for so long because like I knew that I would like it but I was kind of scared to watch it especially by myself so I ended up watching it with the same roommate that I've been watching everything with and she and I fucking devoured that. We watched it so quickly. Um, I ended up what finishing Haunting of Hill House with her and that ending not even the ending man it was like the freaking plot twist the first plot twist i should say just made me like blew my mind i was really satisfying to see that pay off and i just and the haunting of bly manor honestly that was just as good um it was a bit slow in the beginning just because i had so much high expectations from haunting of hill house that it was a bit slow to get into but the ending of that just kind of it just, it was everything that I love. You know, spooky Victorian houses, bloody the ghost story that comes full circle. Like it just, or, oh, and like, mm, gayness. Both of those TV shows had that gay representation that I just loved and adored and I'm just, oh, I'm so attracted to women, man. Like, oh. that whole cast, I was like, all those women are just beautiful and I just can't deal. So those TV shows I watched, and I loved them. At the moment, I'm watching The Cloud's Daughters, season one, so that's good. Um, and I started watching Gotham as well. And <laughs> last night, not last night, night before, I've been watching 1917. This movie, I could talk for hours about how much I love this movie. The scenery, the pacing, it was just so beautiful and so cool. I don't want to drag on too much, but like I understand why I got so many awards and I do highly recommend it. It just, oh, it's just so beautiful and so sad. It made me so anxious and so numb at the same time. And it just fucking slaps. It just, it's so good. So, so good. <laughs> It's cool, it's cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Did I finish this? Thank you for watching. <laughs>